Hey everyone, I hope you're all well, having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. It is Thursday and we are continuing on today with this XY. I keep saying XY, it's X-Ray. X-Ray team that we kicked off with earlier this week. If you've missed any of the games so far this week and you'd like to check them out before coming into today's episode, make sure you check out the card up above and uh, go back and view those matches and I will guarantee you, you will not regret going back and watching any of them. We we are, I think, 7-0 with the team right now, so hopefully we can continue that. We've had some incredible games so far this week, and this team's just been pulling out all of the wins and doing all of the work. It's been absolutely amazing to play, so hopefully we can continue that on today. So without further ado, let's get some music on. Let's jump straight onto the Battle Spot Ladder. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent. And as always, if you enjoy this sort of content, guys, please make sure to leave a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel and make sure to leave your comments down in the comment section about the team, your thoughts in the Ultra Series, or just anything in general, because I love hearing from you all. And uh, we have such a nice community here on the channel, all of us flinch squatters. We've got a first opponent, not picked our music but 1580 rated opponent so we'll hop straight into team preview no we won't we'll hop into it now right our first opponent today is running a team of Lanaris Therian, Xerneas, Lunala, Incineroar, Kangaskhan and the Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko um okay uh what are we going to say it's an interesting Lunala uh, Xerneas team we don't see that too much in the format at the minute it was so popular in the sun and the moon series but it kind of dropped off a little bit in the ultra so nice to see it back we've got the support options there with the Kangaskhan it's going to be mega Kangaskhan in this team it's got that scrappy fake out fake out hits like a truck if it's EV2, it can be very defensively built as well as we've seen ourselves play on the channel. You've got the second Intimidate support and fake out support from that Incineroar and then more Intimidate support from the Landorus. The Tapu Koko is going to be the thing controlling the terrain and may indicate that we've got an Electric Seed, Lunala, uh, which is the only mode of speed control really on the team outside of Electro Web from the Tapu Koko with Tailwind. I wouldn't have thought it is Trick Room in this team. So how are we going to approach this? I think Incineroar here is extremely good for us and probably Tapu Fini here as well um, to be honest the other thing we could do is go Xerneas um, and Serena and then bring in uh, Rayquaza as our last ditched attempt Pokemon hmm. I'm kind of tempted to do that because we could do the cheeky little switch in with Serena turn 1 and get the Geomancy up for free let's lock in with that let's try it might have been better bringing uh, Landorus because the double intimidate here would be so useful for us um, and Landorus is just generally quite a strong Pokemon in this matchup especially when you've got something like Tapu Koko uh, on the opposing side of the field so let's see how we can do in this one right we're going to see Lunala Kangaskhan come out for my opponent they've got a pretty seamless tailwind set up here if they would like to go for that um, but at the same time I have to be a little bit wary because we can fake out the Kangaskhan or U-turn, uh, but we've also got the option, like I said, to bring in uh, Serena and Geomancy ourselves. Now we could just see a Tailwind set up from the Lunala, but I kind of don't mind that really, to be honest. And doing this allows us to get the Geomancy up and then um, the Incineroar back in the next turn to get that double Intimidate onto the Kangaskhan, which makes it way less of a threat than it would have been otherwise. So we will just make that straightforward play. And this is why I think, like, try Serena out in this format, because although there are a lot of flying types around, uh, there is a lot more, in, like, fake out support priority attacks in this format, and Serena is still incredible at supporting your team's setup and get around those kind of disrupt disruptive methods that your opponent will be going for. Now, it'll be interesting to see if my opponent predicts us bringing in the Serena here and just goes for, a, like, a double up onto the Xerneas. That would be... Uh, That'll be a good play from them, but hopefully we see the Mega Revolve and the Fake Out uh, from the Kangaskhan to at least stop this Xerneas setting up. Now the one thing that we do have to worry about with this Kangaskhan that we've not mentioned so far is it's, it does have access to roll here, but maybe this first time we get away with at least getting around the roll. We're not seeing the the, um, the Fake Out though, so that's a little... Are oh, we just going to see a return? Okay, that's fine. I don't mind that too much. But we do have to worry about we do have to worry about the roll the next turn, 100%. Um, but one of the things we could potentially do is just help in hand Moonblast the uh, the Kangaskhan. We have to worry about Psych Up on the opposing Lunala as well, because it paired alongside its own Xerneas, it's probably got 
uh, thigh cup. So that's something that we need to be a little bit more mindful of. Um, now, does the Kangaskhan take a Moonblast? That's the big question, because if not, then we can just U-turn. I'm... Does it take a Moonblast? I don't know if it does. Because um, I'd like to U-turn out on the Lunala, break the Shadow Shield, so at least when Incineroar comes in, it has a way easier time. I think I'd rather just get... <sighs> No, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna go for the U-turn. We could end up regretting this, but I feel like Kang might not be built to take it. You need a lot of investment to take it. Like trust me, you need so much investment to take that Moonblast. So I don't know if they're gonna do it. We're gonna see if the Tapu Koko come in from my opponent. Um, it's gonna take a Moonblast on the process, which isn't gonna be great. It's just Psy Shock, so it's not likely it's got the Psy Cup there, um, which is interesting. Uh, we do get the Moonblast into the Coco. And I know we might be overcomplicating things, but we're just looking at every option possible from what my opponent could do. And we've seen in previous games, so far in the Ultra Series, where we've had real hiccups in games because we're not exploring all the different possibilities and we get caught up by the, the worst ones. Um, okay. Let's bring Incineroar in because then we've got the fake out support as well. Um, we can disrupt the Tapu Koko. Remember that the Tailwind is still up for my opponent. Um, so, you know, we should take a side shock though from the opposing Lunala. And one thing we could potentially do here is just go for, um, we could just go for a Snarl. I just worry about the Kangaskhan coming in. That's why I don't want to not attack. I want to just go for the fake out into the Koko and go, um, Moonblast into this Lunala. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy saying that we'll probably take a uh, side shock. Okay, we're going to see the Kangaskhan come in. Maybe a protect from this Lunala. <sighs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. And this is where my opponent's got the opportunity now to go for the roll with the Kangaskhan. Yeah. They definitely go for the roll. But at the same time, I'm going to go for a Snarl. Um, the Kangaskhan might not even have roll as well. That's the other thing. I just think it probably does. Um, yeah, I'm going to just go for the, the Protect. I don't want to lose Xerneas at the end of the day. I really don't. The Tapu Koko is no problem for us now. We've got two priority mods in the back that we can deal with it. Now we're going to see the side Shock. It's probably going to be the roll. No, it's just a return. That's into actually Incineroar here. That's pretty interesting. So there's no... Wow, look at the damage there. That's insane. We do get the Snarl, which is very useful now. And get the special attack drop. And Tailwind should pitter out now, I think. Yeah. So it makes us faster. So the Kangaskhan might have protect here. Um, but I've still got a Moonblast into that slot. And I think go for uh, another. S no, I'm going to U turn out onto the Lunala and go Moonblast into the Kangaskhan. Strange that the Kangaskhan hasn't revealed Fake Out just yet as well. That's interesting. Um, it's definitely probably got access to it, I'd imagine. Could have Protect, though. Could have Protect. You always get caught up by thinking, oh, it's not going to have Protect. And then it has Protect. Uh, but with the Snarl onto the Lunala now, we're in a way better position to, like, at least take a side Shock here. We could have went for a Moonblast into the Lunala as well. That's the other option here. Um, because we could have potentially denied the Tailwind, which we're going to see now come in. But... Oh, it's just protecting. Okay, so we're, we're going to be able to potentially get rid of it the next turn because we could switch into Serena and then Moonblast the Lunala. And we could potentially really just Dazzling Gleam and switch in just to get the Lunala and then the Kangaskhan. That might be the idea to do. It's just whether the... Oh, it's a Xerneas. Ha ha ha. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to snarl. Um, the 
and Dewey Moonglass the Dozen Gleam. I've got to hope that the Dozen Gleam would get the Lunala from this range. I'm just not 100% sure. I'm going to Dazzling Gleam. I think we get the Lunala from this range. I'm pretty... I'm, yeah, I'm going to say we do. It's actually the Kangaskhan coming in. So, I mean, we might see the Xerneas Protect here so it can get that fake out. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We can get the fake out set up next turn. But we can potentially deny that by bringing in um, our Serena and just going Dazzling Gleam again, which the Kangaskhan is actually like going to go down here, I think. So... We're going to have a free knockout onto the Xerneas the next turn, which is completely fine with me because it cannot... Well, it has to go for the double protect, really, but we can just go for the Dazzling Gleam again and Snarl. And with Rayquaza in the back, with access to the Extreme Speed, I don't think we've got too much to worry about now. Like, if my opponent tries for the double protect and gets it, we're still going to be in an alright position. So we just do the Snarl, do the Dazzling Gleam... And uh, we should be able to lock this one up pretty pretty easily. Not easily, but you know, you've got to just kind of... It's it's still dangerous. It's still dangerous. I think it would have been a lot different if the Lunala had Psych up. Um, because you go for that the turn that we Geomancy. And then you're faster in the in Tailwind and you've got access to the Psy Shock. That's why it's such a devastating option for a lot of players to kind of get on and use. We do get the Lunala, <clears throat> which is nice, and like I say, that Xerneas, oh, it just goes for a Dazzling Gleam, it's not even going to attempt the, the Geomancy. does take down Incineroar, so blocks that potential Snarl on that side of the field. Um, I don't know, we can get Serena in and just go, Faint Moonblast, to seal this up, and no doubt about it, which is perfect for us. So, Faint, and Moonblast. And we'll be able to pick up the win there. So that's really nice for us. And my opponent just forfeits. So very good game to my opponent. And uh, we're able to take another nice win. There. So, alright. We've got one more day with this team. It'd be nice if you want to... Guys, if you like, we could even feature it again next week. I just think it might be nice to feature some other things with an X-Ray build going into next week's episodes for sure but um, I'll make a decision and we'll see what we do because we might play this team for the first part of next week again just to see if we can like keep it continuing in keep continuing it and then we'll maybe change up before the end of the week with something a little bit different so let's lock in some music and should we go for let's go ultra necrozma or necrozma version 1 Necrozma version 1. We haven't had this on for absolutely ages and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. If it does my friends, we will come straight back and uh, we'll jump into the next game straight away. And we have a next opponent of the episode, a 1640 rated Japanese player, so we'll jump straight into team preview. Okay, our next opponent is playing a team of Kyoga Rayquaza, Incineroar, Tapakoko, Serena and the Bronzong. So maybe... We're going to see a Scarf Kyogre here. It's got all the signs to be Scarf Kyogre with the Serena support, the Bronzong support, um, not the Bronzong support, with the Rayquaza support there, but it could indicate as well that we've got a Trick Room mod there with the Bronzong um, to play with Primal Kyogre alongside the Rayquaza. So, um, <clears throat> how are we going to approach this? I think Finney's going to be something that's important for us to have in this match. For sure. I'm going to lead off with Rayquaza, actually. Um, we've just got to be a bit careful with it, to be honest. Uh, or the other thing we could do is go Incineroar Xerneas once again. The only problem is with bringing Xerneas to this game, it makes it difficult to deal with the Bronzong effectively. And maybe it's a better idea to have it as a late game Pokemon rather than a... Um, an early game Pokemon, and then we could go Tapu Fini up front, Rayquaza, and then Xerneas in the back. It's just I missed the opportunity to go for that turn one Geomancy, which is always very tempting with this team. But mm, now we'll lock in with these. I think we'll be all right. So let's get into it. Good luck to my opponent, and uh, hopefully we can keep keep up the momentum with this team. Like I say, it's a lot of fun, and I really like it. It's uh, it's something that I feel quite comfortable with. It suits how I like playing it anyway. 
and Rayquaza is just... I mean, there's no words to explain how ridiculously strong that thing is. As long as you just keep it out of harm's way, like from Intimidate, Spam and things like that, you're sitting in all, you're always sitting in a really nice place with it. So, we're going to see Rayquaza and Incineroar come out for my opponent and we'll lead off with Tapu Fini and our Incineroar. So we do get our Intimidate off onto both these physical attackers, which is really useful. Like I was saying before, you know, getting... Intimidate onto Rayquaza is really useful. It does look like we've maybe got the faster Incineroar here. Um, one of the things we could potentially do is just go for a U-turn into the opposing Rayquaza, uh, into the Incineroar, because I totally expect the Rayquaza just to protect here on my opponent's side of the field. Um, it's very tempting to want to go for an Icy Wind, but... Um, hmm... Well, the other thing we could do, just to not risk anything, is just fake out on the Rayquaza and just go for that Icy Wind. And if they if they don't protect us here and they don't fake out our Finny, then they get punished for it. So, I mean, where's the harm in that? The problem with us going for the U-turn into that Incineroar, expecting them to protect us, it does leave the Rayquaza kind of to allow them to punish us by not faking out into it and getting a Swords Dance off, which would put us in a terrible position. There's the fake out from the opposing Incineroar into ours. So we trade fake outs and that's great for us. I mean, one of the things that we have to like appreciate here is that um, we've broken a potential sash there on the Rayquaza, which is really, really nice for us. So I'm going to actually switch in our own Rayquaza here um, and I'm going to Icy Wind now because with the airlock we get rid of the, the, air, the Delta Stream the mysterious air and we should be able to get a lot more damage onto the supposed Rayquaza with with the icy wind and then we can mega evolve and potentially pick up a knockout with dragon ascent or extreme speed the next turn dragon ascent coming out from the Rayquaza could be banded as well it's gone into our tapu fini minus one though we should take this <sighs> very close very close very close Whew. and we'll probably see the incineral go for a um hmm a U-turn, I would imagine. Incineroar avoids. I mean, I don't mind that. As long as it hits that Rayquaza, that's all we care about. Okay, we do some nice damage. It's definitely an extreme speed range now, isn't it? It's going to probably switch out this next turn. We do see the U-turn come up from the Incineroar. The sooner we can get rid of this banded variant, the better. It's definitely banded from that, that damage as well. There's no way it would be doing that much intimidated normally. Um, and that makes sense for why it didn't protect turn one. So we see the Bronzong hit the field now. Uh, I think we just drag an ascent into the Rayquaza. Um, I'm not gonna actually. Am I going? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna Mega Revolve just yet. I'm gonna just drag an ascent, and I'm gonna heal pulse. Rayquaza, so we've got our Sash back intact. The Bronzong is going to set the Trick Room up 100%, and that thing switches out probably to Incineroar. Yeah. So as long as the Kyogre is not out on the field right now when this Trick Room gets it, I don't mind. You just don't want to risk dragging Ascent into this slot and taking a Gyro Ball that could potentially take down a Rayquaza, so getting our Sash intact before we switch it out again, bring Incineroar back onto the field. That's the main thing. That's what we want to be doing. Okay, heal pulse. Get that sash back. There we go. Trick room. That's fine. So we've got our sashed Rayquaza. And I know we didn't get really much done with Finny there, but it doesn't matter. We've got a brilliant switch in now to Incineroar, which we're going to do. And I'm just going to scold. Uh, yeah, I'm going to scold. Hmm. Yeah, the Bronzong. Yeah, because the Bronzong's the one thing that we like don't have too many options for, so it's good to start thinking about that target now. It's unlikely that it's got Protect, and I'd say, if anything, the Incineroar pivots out with U-Turn onto us this turn, and we get the Rain up, which is going to boost our Scald into that Bronzong uh, going into this following one. Oh, it's gone Hypnosis. Blind Hypnosis. You're, you're a madman. You're a madman, I say it. Wow, okay. Blind as well. You're keen. I mean, if we get the burn here, that would be amazing. Now we need to keep an eye on. Wow, it does nothing after the snarl. We get the burn though. Tapu Fini on point. Um, yeah, we need to keep 
Oh, wow. Okay, that's perfect. Because I was just about to say, we need to keep an eye on uh, Misty Terrain. When that runs out, we, um, we need to have it. We need to have it in the back to be able to utilize. Um, okay. So I think we could Snarl for sure. For sure. We could Flare Blitz, just the Bronze on, and just protect Rayquaza. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We've got the, the airlock up. So if you bring in the Kyogre to get around that, it ain't gonna work, my friend. Unless you switch the bronze on out to Kyogre, and then we we kind of fail. Skill swap. Ooh, intimidate. That's nice. That's cute. I like that. <clears throat> and, and, and a levitating incineroar. <laughs> How good we're... Oh, well, no, it wouldn't be that great with them... Um, with levitate, it wouldn't have intimidate anymore, so it would be pretty. It would be way less useful. We do get the um, the flare blitz into that bronze on, which is nice. It does do a nice chunk of damage there. Um, and I think we can just snarl now and just <laughs> mega evolve and dragon ascent. Trick room's gonna end very soon, and I think a snarl plus the burn from. Our Incineroar into the Bronze on be enough. We'll be able to get rid of the opposing Incineroar now with her Rayquaza. And I think to end the game. Ooh, ugh. You do get a little bit lucky with avoiding a hypnosis there. That wouldn't have been ideal. Um we see a U-turn now from the NC. E-turn into yeah, Ray Quasar. It's okay. So our slash is broken. It's alright. It's all alright. Because whatever comes in here, if it's Rayquaza or the Kyogre, then it's yeah, Rayquaza. So we get rid of that threat, which is always good. And I think we're gonna be able to kind of seal this one up pretty easily from here. Kyogre's likely to be in the back for my opponent, I think. And for reasons why they haven't brought it in yet, it would indicate to me that it's probably Scarfed rather than Primal. I don't know, I just want to, I just, I have an inkling that that's what it is. Because you can't, if it's Primal, you want to get it in uh, under Trick Room to just start really doing as much damage as possible to my opponent. I could be wrong though, I could be wrong. And I am wrong, so I kind of prefer to see. Um, Primal Kyogre than Scarf Kyogre. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah. Primal uh, Scarf Kyogre is definitely easier to deal with. Um, I think what we'll do is Snarl. What's my opponent got? The Incineroar. Yeah, we'll bring in Finny and just get around this Hypnosis. We'll get rid of the Bronzong here. Get the Snarl onto the Kyogre. We'll probably lose Incineroar in the process, but... The Snarl could be quite useful, especially because we're able to kind of lock the Kyogre in now. It can't switch out to get rid of this uh, special attack reduction, which could be quite useful. Do get around the Hypnosis there again, get the Snarl off, take the Bronze on down, reduce that special attack damage on the Kyogre. I wonder if it's tempted to go for an Ice Beam. Yeah, it is. There it is. Okay. The Trick Room should end now, yeah. And just good old Incineroar to come in. But we should be able to close this one up pretty comfortably from this point. I mean, we've got Scald even on our Tapu Fini that we can utilize. Uh, okay, what Pokemon have we got in the back? Okay, we've got two. Oh, we've got both of so that means it doesn't really matter now. Um, I will just U-turn out on the Incineroar in case that Kyogre decides to protect for whatever reason. I'm just going to Scald the Incineroar. That should be enough in the rain to pick it up from here. I would hope it was going to be. I'm going to see a fake out into Incineroar. Scald. Ooh, actually faster than the Kyogre as well. Okay. In the rain, able to take it down. So just that Kyogre left. And uh, we are able to pick up another couple of wins. We're going to lose Incineroar, unfortunately. But King Cat, you did so well, my little my little feline friend. You go and have a little rest in your Pokeball. And uh, we'll finish this off with the big dog himself. 
Because knowing that we're faster than the Kyogre, we can Dragon Ascend, Heal Pulse ourselves, just get our Sash back and take a nice beam and then just Heal Pulse. Uh, well, it just Dragon Ascend again the next turn. So the utility of that with a faster Finny is, is just so useful. So that's what we will do, and that should be game. We might see the forfeit, or is my opponent going to let us see this one out like a true champion? So here's the Dragon Ascent. Not quite enough, but that's because Primal Kyogre is just a beast, isn't it? It's very unlikely without a light bulb that you're ever able to get like a one-hit KO on, on the majority of Primal Kyogres. Or a band even, there's the Ice Beam. It's weakened through the mysterious air. And... Oh! <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you actually kidding? <laughs> oh, scup out of the last hurdle. Um... I mean, we'll just we'll just scald. Ray can go down now. We've got Xerneas in the back, so I mean, we're not too worried about it. If we didn't have the Xerneas, I'd be a little bit more worried about it. We could have scalded our own Rayquaza there as well, but we, we wouldn't get an, an attack off anyway. So I'm just gonna see an Origin Pulse. It's not even enough to get either. Come on, Ray. Let's wake up. I uh, will not wake up. Let's. Uh, I mean, I'm going to heal Pulse just in case they go for an Origin Pulse again. We throw out Ray. <laughs> Through all adversity, comes back stronger and says, No, Kyogre, I'm taking this game today. Whew, that's all right. So, very good game to my opponent. And uh, we pick up another nice win. Another way for us to end the episode, which is perfect for us, guys. And we'll end it up there. So, I'll just say a very good game to my opponent. And... Um, we will end up, I will say thank you so much for coming and viewing the episode today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do leave your comments down below, guys, and I will see you for the next one very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.